In Builder, we try to make styling your apps as easy as it can be without sacrificing the full flexibility of CSS. But we've still given it to you in a very no-code friendly way that anyone can understand, especially with just a little bit of practice. And so inside of Builder, all the normal rules of CSS exist, cascading, inheritance, and inline styling overruling all of it. To start with this process, let's go ahead and just jump into a page property. So on any page, if you click this little three dot menu, you'll see page properties right here. And under page properties, you have a styling section. And on that, you'll see typically on most of your pages, the page body, unless you end up changing it. Now, I start with the page in particular because the page is what's introducing a lot of the characteristics that the rest of our elements are inheriting from the top. So for example, the font family is inheriting where we're seeing this font across the board. And that's because the font family has been set here on the page header. Same with the background. So our default background is this hex code right here. And so we're seeing that across the board unless it's overridden by a different attribute on the page itself. And so that's what you're seeing on the, the page body. As we jump into the element tree and we actually look at the pages themselves, we're seeing a few additional things. So we have these sections right here. And here's a good example where we have a section with a section one call out where we've overridden the background color again of from the page and the color of the font. So we switched basically the background to a light color and we switched the font color to a dark color to be able to have that contrast. And as you can tell again here, we're setting these parameters, not on the text itself. So I didn't say, hey, on this element right here, I want your text to show up this color. I did it on the section itself to influence all of the things that were nested beneath it inside of the element tree. And that could change this really quickly if I want. So let's say I want to click this and I instead wanted the background color to be red. You can see it change red immediately there in the studio. Let me go ahead and switch it back. One of the next things to show is how our class system that we just used on the right hand side works inside of Builder as well. So let's go ahead and click on the sign up for early access button for me to show you a few things about classes. In Builder, we've created a system to help you organize your style classes without taking away your ability to have that overriding style class effect that is used frequently in scaled applications to keep you organized. So in Builder, we have what's called a primary style class. This means that we will always add that style class first whenever that particular element is loading on your page. So what that means is, is that your primary class is the base. This is what your average button, let's say, will look like. And then beneath that, you have utility classes. Utility style classes are used to override some of the attributes from the primary style class without having to rewrite all of the basic ones that you want all of your buttons to maintain. And so when we look at a button, something that we have is a certain amount of padding. Something that we have is a normalized border radius that we always want. But then when we look at the utility class here, you can see we've done a couple of things. In particular, the most important thing, we increase the font size. And so that is what's making this button bigger is because we've said the font needs to be larger than what it is on the primary button. And so what's happening is you have a primary class that's overridden in part by a utility class. And you're not limited to just one utility class. As you grow and scale your application, you might have a lot of utility classes that you use in different circumstances. Sometimes you might have a utility class that just means a particular color for a background. Sometimes you might have it like this, where it's describing a particular use case for an element and it's housing a lot of different attributes in one utility style class. And then you have our inline styling right here. Our inline styling allows you to put an override for all of the other attributes on a property right directly on that element itself. So it's not gonna influence any of the other elements in your application. It's just gonna influence this particular element. So let's say I did wanna go ahead and say, you know what, this one in particular, I wanna make this button green to really get the attention. 
So I can make it green, it'll show up green instantaneously. Now, one important thing to know about style classes is style classes very purposefully are used to make your application more efficient. So they're used across your application and influence multiple elements throughout your application and not just the one that you're looking at. So a really great example is, let's jump to this text right here. As you can tell, these three headers all share similar attributes. And so if we look closer at it, they are all heading, but they all have a heading H3 tag attached to it. And that's why they all look the same, the same size and the same padding from everything else around it. Now, I'm gonna click into the utility class here and go ahead and show you what it's gonna look like if I happen to override the color of these. So let's say I wanted this to be purple. You'll see it'll change instantaneously. I'm not just the one I'm on, it's gonna change on all of them. And that's gonna go for any attribute that I change here on this utility class, because it's gonna influence everything in my project and my app that is using this heading H3 style class. Now, something else that's interesting, let's go ahead, in addition to editing this utility class, let's maybe change the color of the fonts in the primary class. So let's call this red. Now what's gonna happen is nothing changed on this one because I already know that I've overridden the color by this utility class on these particular properties. But what you did notice is that on another header that we have, that has an H2 tag, instead of an H3, like we have in these ones, I haven't overridden the color in this one's utility class. So when I changed the color of this heading, it went ahead and overrode this particular heading element because red was the most cascaded color setting for that particular element. Now, a really great thing that we've built into some of our starter UIs is a style guide. And this is really great because it actually gives you a single spot to see what all of the different properties and elements inside of your application should look like. As you grow and scale, this is very valuable from a standardized design perspective. So everyone knows what things should look like. You can see which elements are here and which style classes that they have. So you know, when I use a H2 tag and the heading tag, this is what it's gonna look like. And then if you ever need to edit it, Let's say you decide to rebrand and change everything. You can look at this and edit all of the main classes that you use throughout the application. And it's gonna edit and redesign your entire application just from this page because you've designed with CSS and classes from the beginning, keeping all of your standards organized and easy to manage. Now there's two other examples I like to give when I talk about the power of having CSS inside of Builder fully exposed. Let's jump back into this H2 tag right here. So our first tag, as we know, as we look at the styling is our all props. So basically every single CSS property that we have, you can click on these menus, expand them and see which properties that you can change and then change them directly right here. You've got our use props that is a summary of all of the properties that are actually being given a value inside of this particular class. So you don't have to look at the whole list of hundreds of CSS properties. You can just look at the ones that you've managed and used for that particular one. The most important thing though, is we've also fully exposed CSS on a code level as well. And you might ask yourself why you care about this, especially if you're a no coder, well, the reality is, is that as you build your application, there's a really good chance you're gonna find inspiration online. You're going to use CSS tools that say, hey, you want a button that looks like this? Go ahead and put this CSS code on that button. And so instead of you having to one by one translate that code, you can go ahead and just copy and paste that CSS code directly in. We take that code and then apply it to your properties where you can then manage it in no code way. So here's an example of something that's really common, box shadows. Oftentimes you see a shadow on like a button or a specific property, like a card on a page. And we make it easy for you to, if you stumble across a tool like this, or maybe you visit a blog and they say, hey, 
here's a thing that you could do to your app and you want to try it out. Builder makes it really easy for you to do that. And so let's go ahead and play around with a box shadow here. Let's make this really bright just because I don't want to miss it. There we go. Now we've got this whole style for our box shadow. Let's go ahead and select it. Let's jump back to the app and let's just choose this text input. If I wanted to apply all of the styles that I just made with that CSS tool or anywhere else across the web I found, I can just click the CSS, hit save changes, and instantly it's going to apply it directly to that property. So CSS is really valuable to be able to copy and paste code in and share code from in the format of raw CSS code. Now, one of the best examples we have is ChatGPT recently has made it really awesome to, to make kind of answers to questions yeah. like, hey, how should I style this button? Or if I want this button to do this, what should I do? So let's go ahead and just say, hey, ChatGPT, can you make me a colorful button with rainbow background and a fun box shadow? So I, I use the rainbow example in particular because one of the things that you will do in CSS, if you want to have a gradient or something, you have different CSS attributes that make that possible, like a linear gradient. And then you actually clarify the colors that you want in this unique way. And so at this point, ChatGPT, it's writing out all the details for us right now. And what I can do now that I have this is I don't have to worry about copying this name for the class right here. That's what this is at the top. It's a name for the style class. I can just copy this information in the middle, jump right back over to my builder project and paste this in and hit save changes. And now you can see immediately I took from chat GPT, all the instructions to create a box with a colored background and a colored shadow effect. And if I wanted to go about editing it back and forth, I could chat with chat GPT or again, what we do immediately is transfer this raw CSS code that you used right here. We transfer it into your used properties right away. So you could begin to edit parts about this directly in no code without having to go back to code. You can switch your code into no code and then use that visual interface that we have inside of Builder. So that's what styling in Builder looks like. You're able to edit things in no code, incorporate full CSS code from anywhere on the web, and you're able to consistently use the same cascading structure CSS is known for.